What's going on, guys? Jabron here. It has been years since I've done a podcast. I'm so excited to be back with everyone. And right now, I'm here with my good friend, Jonathan. And yes, him sir. and I are going to be jumping on this together. I'm really excited because he has so much knowledge to share. And I have so much that I want to share with everybody. And I think between the two of us, we're going to be able to really provide value to everyone who's out there listening to us. Johnny, tell us a little bit about how you got started in the industry and what you want people to know about you. Well, I don't want to go too in depth into my whole story because it's very long. But um, yeah, I moved out here probably six years ago. And right now we have a pretty big portfolio. We have like 330 units around there. We have two RV parks um, and we're trying to acquire more commercial assets right now even though the interest rates are going up. But yeah, we're still we're still chugging along. We've been having difficulties with um, hiring employees, but that's with any growing company. You know, you have different hurdles in the business, but it's just growing pains. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I know that feeling. I'm going through the same thing. And it's kind of interesting because we're in a weird time in America. Yes, we uh, We've are. got inflation. We've got rising interest rates. And we've got really low unemployment which makes for a situation where people aren't really dying for a job. People are expecting very high wages. Yes. They are expecting a lot of flexibility. Well, I will say that over the last three months, the employment market has shifted. We are seeing a lot more qualified employees starting to apply for jobs. And yeah. we're seeing that a lot of um, even investors have let go of their staff and we actually picked up a crew recently a construction crew that was working for a, an investor that was sending their people out to um louisiana oh yeah, and that's, that's where we got julio yeah uh, we got julio and all his crew from there and we're starting to see other investors starting to let go of their staff that are very well trained and this is per pretty much the perfect opportunity for the strong investors to just take over other companies who are just struggling yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that recessions tend to bring a lot of opportunity. Tons of opportunity. People feel like the word recession means the negative. world is going under. It's a negative thing. And really all it means is slow down. Yes. It means the economy is going to contract and slow down. Exactly. And the weak are going to usually fall out in a recession. 100%. And the people with strong businesses or strong business sense tend to come up during a recession. Yes, and I feel that is going to be, we're seeing it already. We're seeing a lot of people that have um, had, they were super over leveraged, and now yeah. they're starting to not be able to get cash flow because when you're cash flowing, quote unquote, there's still maintenance. There's still roofs that need to replace. And right now we have the AC Armageddon right now yeah. <laughs> with us. We've really <laughs> literally spent like $50,000 this season and probably more. You're about to um, scare everyone who's listening out there. <laughs> They're going, man, I don't know if I want to become an investor. Yeah, but I'm it, hearing this whole $50,000 talk. <laughs> but it's not because you have to look at the whole, the whole picture. Obviously, yeah. you know, we're looking at in 330 units, 50,000 is not a lot. You know, That's true. It's, it's true. not a lot. It's relative <laughs> exactly, to your portfolio. Exactly. So you can't compare apples and oranges. But I just feel like, you know, investors that were over leveraged and they didn't have the ability to move quickly because in this industry, it's all about moving fast when you're using private money or um, other people's money. You, you can't sit on a property and let it sit vacant and wait for your contractor to move. You got to be pushing them. You got to be out there talking to them every day, pushing them to get yeah. the, the project done because they're not, they don't care. They don't realize that we're paying all this interest. Oh, absolutely. And I think that time is one of the things that a lot of investors forget to calculate for <laughs> right Am it's I a right massive no? <laughs> your time is valuable and not just the time 
your time, but also the time of paying for interest, which is probably the hardest thing because every month that goes by, if you're in a million dollar debt and you're paying 12% interest, that's literally a lot of money and people don't think about those things. Oh, absolutely. I, I was talking with an investor and he purchased a fourplex property mm -hmm. and the entire complex is done, renovated. And, I, and he's saying, I'm not making any cash flow on it. And so I said, well, what do you got in rents? Well, two of the units are vacant. One of the units is rented, and one of the units is rented, but they're mm -hmm. not paying. And I'm going, well, of course you're not going to be making money. How do you expect to make money in that situation? Yes. And that's just one of those situations where that person might not really be cut out to be in this type of industry. Yes, yes, especially when you start. When you start, you're gonna be the man that has all the hats. You're not gonna be the master delegator. And you know, I'm having that problem to transition from being the man with a thousand hats to the man that's just delegating everything. So it's two different roles. As your company grows, you have to slowly let go of things. But when you're first starting, you're going to hustle. You're going to suffer. You're going to go and clean. You're going to go pick up trash because your contractor left a bunch of trash and the appraisals tomorrow. You're going to deal with all those things that the gurus don't tell you because they want you to think that it's all beautiful. And it's not because <laughs> you're going to be working your ass off. Yeah, I like how when we sat down to put this together and just to give everyone some perspective on what they're hearing here, we said, we're going to tell people about interest rates. And instead we get to talking about these issues that you run into as an investor. But I actually think that this is a really important conversation because in this recession, the people that are unable to overcome those situations, they're the ones that are going to get wiped out yes and that's what's going to create opportunity <laughs> a lot for of a lot of other people so um back on that subject bb i just feel like i need to tell everybody i've been through that i've been through that recession 2020 happened i had i think four or five flips going i owed money to a hard money lender i think over a million dollars it was actually way over a million dollars it was actually 1.6 million dollars that i owed him and plus i had other debt with other lenders like quick lending and other hard money lenders here in Houston. And I couldn't get out because the financial market stopped all the lending stopped. So what happens? Your lenders are still going to require you to pay them. And if you don't have any interest reserves, you're screwed. So it's really about overcoming, having the ability to have savings to be able to overcome these issues. So now for me, I am comfortable with saying that I feel like I can sleep at night. I can go to sleep like a baby, wake up, and know that if tomorrow I have a $100,000 bill, I could just pay it, and I'm going to still be fine. My family's not going to go under. I'm not going to go bankrupt because of $100,000. And a lot of people don't understand those dynamics that a lot of people get in debt and debt and debt. Deals, 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 deals come up. And you're like buying them and buying them and buying them. But then you have to think about all the interest payments that you have to do. <laughs> and that's when it becomes a problem. <laughs> because then if you can't refinance, what happens? Yeah, no, absolutely. You're done. And, and I think we're about to see a little bit of an apocalypse. Mm -hmm. And I say a little one because Not I don't think one. it's going to be massive. No. But I think there is going to be a little bit of apocalypse with investing, real estate investing getting so popular over the last three to five years. Yes. And really since the pandemic is when it really exploded. Yes, it did. I never heard anyone talk about commercial multifamily unless you were in a specific place talking about commercial multifamily. Mm -hmm. Now everywhere I go, even the single, single family people, they're talking about multifamily and commercial. <laughs> yes. Do you that means that means it's time to sell? <laughs> no. But on the serious side a lot of people, they see um, our friend Boris, you know, his lifestyle. It's amazing. I love it. And that's who inspired me to be where I'm at. And I always give him his respect because he's the one that taught me this industry. Um, but people have to really dissect the deal for yourself. You have to educate yourself to understand what you're getting yourself into. Right now, we're underwriting a deal that is a low-income housing property, yeah. and the owner, we sat down with the owner on Saturday, and he's like, hey, do you know what, yourself, what, what you're getting yourself into? And I was like, no, I don't know. 
Yeah. So he's like, I'm going to send you the contract, go back and do, do, your, do your due diligence and then come back to me. So we literally, since Saturday, have been literally doing research, hours and hours of research. We're not talking about just doing a comp. No, we're talking about educating ourselves on what the program is, what's going to happen if we purchase this property, who's going to do the renovation, how is it going to work with the government, all these different things that need a, that entail the actual um, the actual transaction. Now, purchase so the property, yeah. if someone can just tell you, oh, this is an amazing deal, anybody's going to tell you that, but now it's up to you to dissect it, go and check on the property, check how the how bad the renovation is, how the foundation, how's the roof, all these things are going to determine if it's a good deal or not. And then also the rents of the property in that area. So if you're in an area that's more of a DC area, you have to realize that rents contract fast in those areas. And especially if it's up and coming, how they say, like Third Ward and you know those areas that you and can rent. we're talking rent. specifically about Houston when it comes to a lot of this, and as we talk more in this uh, on this podcast, and we make more episodes, and we really start to educate the people out there, we want them to understand we're talking about the Houston market. Yes, only the Houston market. That's the market that we know. Yes, we, we don't know what's going on in Atlanta. Exactly. We're not talking about what's going on no. in California. No, no, no. We're talking about Houston, Texas. Yes, there's one market. So when we say things like D and C class, we're talking about certain areas here in Houston. In Houston, market exactly. Where the rents don't surpass a certain amount, where the rents stay kind of in capped a, by the area. Well, the rents already went up. Yeah. What when I moved here six years ago, you would hear four hundred dollar rents. Yeah, that's five hundred dollar rents. So in the last two years, the supply of money has doubled. So what's gonna happen? People are gonna have more money available to them. So the rents are gonna go from being four hundred to now seven hundred to a thousand dollars a month. Those rents have gone up that much. But you have to realize that and investors have to realize that these the rents are not going to continue to go up forever. Nothing goes yeah. up forever. So there has to be a plateau. And right now we're in that weird moment where the rents are trending sideways, but slowly trending down. And when you underwrite your deals, you have to make sure you put that cushion in your underwriting. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we're getting close to the end of this episode right here, man. Yeah, and we talked a lot already. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, well, that's one thing that you and I can do. We can definitely talk. Especially about real estate. <laughs> if we wanted to do hour-long episodes, we could. Oh, that would be a, a, a cakewalk. <laughs> yes, exactly. But we don't want to bore you guys. We really appreciate you guys t listening to our podcast. Um, we're definitely going to be talking about certain things. If you guys have any questions, reach out to us. I'm on uh, Instagram. I'm HTX One Day Closer. I do buy a bunch of real estate. Me and BB buy it, and we're looking for more, especially commercial um, and land. That's where I'm focused on right now. My attention on land and commercial, and BB is doing the same. Yeah, pretty he's much trying all the same, to buy. Yeah. We're, we're trying to buy even though we're in this recession. There's going to be investors who are going to have to liquidate, and we're here to buy them whenever they're ready. They can reach out to us and we're more than likely going to pick up the properties and manage them ourselves. Awesome, man. Follow us, HTX One Day Closer, Jonathan Chacon. Yes. I'm Gibran Hernandez, Riverlord. That's RVR Lord on Instagram. We look forward to putting out more valuable content for you. Thanks so much for being here with us today. And Thank we'll you. see you next time. See you next time. That was good. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> I told you, man.